Hello everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing yet another off-season series where I'm going through each of the AFL clubs and projecting what they might look like in three years in terms of their best 22 or best 24 players. Uh, so the idea of this, you might say, what's the point? We can't predict it. That's absolutely true. I'm not trying to predict it as such. More trying to project what might happen in three years. Obviously, there's no drafting or trading, etc. Um, and the idea is to look at maybe how vulnerable different clubs are from an age point of view, how much talent do they have coming through the ranks. Again, I am an outsider, I'm an Eagles fan looking at Collingwood today, uh, but I think it's been a useful exercise in looking at what clubs might do strategically to prevent problems uh, in three years or potentially enhance strengths that are going to exist in three years as well. So um, like I always do, the first thing we do is look at what players are likely to be retired and then uh, I map out a bit of a best 24. So before I get into it, um, if you're unaware, I have done uh, an entire playlist on this channel uh, called AFL Teams in Three Years. You can go and find that. And I've got uh, every club so far from reverse alphabetical order to Collingwood, which means I have three left after this. And I've also done a 2024 version of the same thing uh, called Analyzing Teams for 2024. No, sorry, it's called Team-Based Videos for 2024. Um, but you can find that. So there is a Collingwood version of that as well, which I'll also link to in this video up the top right corner as you're looking at it. Also, while you're there, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Um, I've obviously been working very hard to make a lot of off-season content, and I will, of course, be covering the AFL through 2024 as well. So if that sounds up your alley, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. All right, no more promotion. Let's talk about this Collingwood Football Club. Obviously, just come off a premiership win. Focus, as you can understand, would be how do we improve in the here and now to preserve this premiership window. Uh, so the three years for them is an interesting transitional period. Uh, you know, obviously, assuming they don't recruit anyone, uh, to see what they might look like in three years and just see how many key players they're going to lose to retirement. Obviously, uh, I'm taking conservative guesses at which players will retire, uh, but it is going to be a pretty different looking Collingwood uh, as things currently stand in three years, but we do know they do tend to get stuck in and, and do their recruiting, which I'm sure they will. We can talk about that later. Let's talk about which players are likely to be retired. So, Scott Pendlebury at 39. Look, he could still be playing. I know, he doesn't look like he's close to retiring, but I'm going to err on the side of thinking he probably will be at 39. So, 39 years of age, Scott Pendlebury is retired. I'm also going to sail off into the sunset. Jeremy Howe and Steele Sidebottom, who are 36 by round one of 2027, uh, as will Mason Cox. So there's another three gone. Jamie Elliott at 34, Brody Majacek at 34, uh, Tom Mitchell will be 33, nearly 34. I'm retiring them all. Jack Crisp at 33 as well, and Will Hoskin Elliott. And that's by round one of that season. So some of those players turn another year older um, with a birthday later in 2027. So those are the players that I have out of this team. Now, the next part I want to cover is which players uh, have I retained that will be at least 30 and therefore veterans on this list. So you might think I've gone pretty hard with the retirements, but there's also still going to be a lot of 30 plus year olds, relatively speaking, compared to the other teams I've done on this list. And we do know, uh, I've done a video recently, two videos actually analyzing clubs by list age and Collingwood are the oldest uh, list, which you'd expect because they are in the premiership window. It's not a criticism, uh, but let's talk about the players that will be at least 30. Dan McStay, Darcy Cameron, Darcy Moore, and Jordan Dugowie will all be at least 31 by round one of that year. Then you've got Oleg Markov, Braden Maynard, Billy Frampton, who is older than I thought, and John Noble. These guys will be 30 years old. So that's still another eight veterans on the list, um, and that's after you've uh, ejected all those players um, that I mentioned earlier. So with that all being said, I've talked about which players are unavailable, which players are still on the list, Let's try and have a crack at their best 24. So I've got it up on the screen now and you can see uh, there's a lot of colors and numbers. If you haven't seen these types of videos before, I will explain what they all mean. Uh, so I've gone with an extended bench of six on the bench just to map out the uh, the depth a little bit deeper. Uh, but so the green is players I'm pretty confident will be in the best 22 three years from now. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that I necessarily don't rate the players in yellow. Those are the players I'm just a little less sure about and there's a little bit more uh, it's a little bit more open to interpretation whether they'll be there for a variety of reasons they might be a young prospect there might be competition for their spots I wouldn't get too caught up in the in the colors it's just a bit of a visual aid the numbers indicate the the first number is their age by round one of 2027 and the second number is a rough estimate of how many games they might have played based on um, you know, how, are they best 22 right now? Are they development players who might have seen a little bit less football? How deep is this team? Um, things like that. And I've accounted a little bit for age, uh, injury and suspension. So with that all being said, let's talk about this team. Now, 
That back six looks, uh, well, if you're just going by the green, it looks good. And that's true. They're all pretty established players. So uh, f- the good news is Nathan Murphy does seem to be clear to play football, which is fantastic news. So I'm just going to assume he's still um, around because uh, in my last video, I did actually map out a best 22 for Collingwood uh, where he wasn't available and we weren't sure at the time. But let's assume he's, he's all good, which I believe he is. So Murphy and more of the key backs, pretty happy with that. I've got Markov uh, in that back line there, probably starting with a couple of retirements uh, from this list. Quainall will be in his prime, and uh, Maynard will be also in that back pocket as a 30-year-old. So it's not too old. You know, that you got three 30-year-olds, a 27-year-old, a 26-year-old, and then I slapped, slapped Togiath on a half-back flank there. I just think, it's personal opinion, I just like Togiath as a prospect, um, and I could see him adding something very different to what they already have down there. You know, maybe not too dissimilar to Quainor with the, you know, intercepting and the speed and rebounds, but I, I think you can't really get too much of that in a team. So he's the one that's made this that spot for me. I did sideline John Noble a little bit, uh, but he's still probably going to be best 24 around that age uh, of 30. So it's a pretty solid back line. The next cap off the rank in terms of a key back is probably Charlie Dean, who will be 25 and hopefully would have gotten over his injury issues and, and still around the mark. Now, let's talk about the midfield. Uh, you've got the, Day, the Daykai, the two Daykos brothers, um, still around and probably in their prime at 28 and 24, respectively. Um, yeah, no, there's no, no chance of slowing down. Obviously, Nick Daykos is still really, really young. Uh, so that's a good start. The other wing I gave to Ed Allen, again, a play we haven't seen yet, and uh, still kind of finding his feet in terms of, like, what position is he? As a, as a junior, he was a bit of a oversized utility um, so, you know, he got moved around a little bit. So is the wing his best position? I'm not sure. Is he an inside mid? Again, I'm not too sure. But I, I've slapped into this team. The on-ballers, other than that, will be Dugowie and Finley McRae, uh, simply because that is probably the next two cabs off the rank. Well, certainly Dugowie is obviously probably going to be a lock. Again, could he transition to more of a permanent forward post-30? Maybe. We'll see. But they don't actually have a lot of midfield options outside of that. So I think that's the best mix that I could find. And Finley McRae, again, is, is probably just on the cusp of making this team. Um, and we might see him a bit more in 2024. So a couple of really young players or unproven players, and then some established guns in that midfield. So it's still pretty strong. I did put Lipinski on the bench there. You know, justifiably, he could be there ahead of Finley McRae, but we'll see what happens there. It doesn't really matter. And Harry Demetia, their recent draftee, again, uh, probably going to be around the mix, pick 25, highly rated. Um, what role he plays, I'm not too sure. Is he a utility to start, then he becomes a mid? Potentially, potentially. But the lack of young depth, obviously, from a midfield point of, midfield point of view for Collingwood, means he might be around this mix anyway uh, as a midfielder, but we'll see. So let's talk about the forward line now. And uh, this one, obviously, the small to medium types are still going to be pretty strong. So Lockie Shaw's at 29, still going to be at the back end of his prime, a uh, good quality player. Dan McStay at 31. He'll be the veteran key forward. And we talked about it in the last video, a bit of a lack of um, clear options to play in his absence. And I think without drafting one or trading one in, which I'm sure they will, I'm sure they'll trade one in, uh, the, it's a little unclear like their key forward depth going forward. So I've went with the mix of Dan McStay, Ash Johnson and Reef McInnes. Now, I did note from the comments, there's a lot of Ash Johnson love uh, from Collingwood fans. He will be 29 at this point. 193 centimeter key forward. Um, is he a true key forward? Again, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm 100% confident. Uh, that being said, he's probably the best option that they've got. And Ruth McInnes as well. I feel like we'll start to see more in 2024 and he might establish himself as a good third tall at AFL level. Uh, I do see the potential there. So that, that's the mix that I went for with Nathan Kruger who has only played nine games and is about 24 years of age. Um, still very in- inexperienced. So I decided to go with Johnson, McInnes, and McStay as the mix over Kruger. And Billy Frampton is another one that's kind of floating. I don't really know what his best role is in 2024, let alone three years from now. Maybe he plays more as a ruck forward. Maybe he, he settles back as a key back. Um, I'm not too sure, but he's sort of in the mix there as a, a depth tall. And what this team kind of lacks is quality tours, particularly forward of center. Obviously, Darcy Moore's a star. Nathan Murphy's a good key back. But generally speaking, um, in an ideal world, I think Collingwood would like to unearth someone that pushes out the Krugers and the Framptons from this team. And I kind of skipped over McCreary and Bobby Hill there, but you know, I'm pretty confident they're going to be best 22 in three years. And quality players in their prime, 26 and 25, uh, that's looking pretty sweet. So overall, it's a still a decent team with good quality veterans with 
quality veterans that have obviously retired. They've still got a good amount of them left. There's other players that I'll, I'll mention that I didn't have making this team. Jacob Ryan could be there. Maybe he's there instead of Togiath. I don't know. Out of, of what I've seen of uh, Jacob Ryan versus Togiath, I just prefer Giath a little bit. Uh, that being said, he could easily be in this mix or probably on a, on a bench. Josh Carmichael, again, I didn't have in this team. Um, and then there's Harvey Harrison. Again, I don't know too much about him. There's a couple of rock ruck prospects, Oscar Steen and Aiden Begg, who's a bit more of a forward ruck. Again, it's very speculative, and I think Collingwood will obviously need to add to this this talent depth. But obviously, this isn't meant to be framed as a criticism of where they'll be in three years, because the reality is they're contending for a premiership. They've just won one. They're going to want to add a second one. I'm sure if they win two or three, they don't really care how hard they fall off the cliff, uh, if it's only for a few years anyway. Uh, that being said, there's a few positional weaknesses in this team, particularly a key forward. Now, I think in 12 months, they're going to land somebody, whether it be a Jamara, whether it be a Ben King. I'm not too sure where the Ben King story sits. Uh, that being said, I think Collingwood will have no issue trying to attract talent. As for the midfield, it could probably use a bit of bolstering, whether it be the draft or what. Uh, but again, could Collingwood just pluck Bailey Smith out of the Bulldogs? Like, maybe. Maybe. They do have that attracting power. So... Um, I'm not concerned about where they'll be in three years because they are such a powerful club that they'll they'll ensure that they stay competitive, uh, even though that midfield probably is a little bit vulnerable. Despite the top-end talent of Dacos, Dacos and Dugowie, even at 31, I don't think that has the punch to really contend. Uh, but I'm sure they'll find ways to, to combat that. So again, like I, I've said, they need to draft halls, probably trade and draft halls in, uh, maybe draft a, a key back, trade in a key forward, um, and then go from there. Maybe a good young rough prospect they can unearth. Whether they whether that is Oscar Steen, I have no idea. Uh, but someone to backfill Darcy Cameron, that could be something they look at with Mason Cox likely out of this team. So in 12 months' time, uh, Collingwood will not have a first-round draft pick. They did give that up for Lockie Schultz. Um, so if they are going to re, uh, reinforce this team, it's probably going to need to be through free agency, unless they trade you know, their second rounder for... Um, you know, an okay player at another club. I think if they're looking at really bolstering this team, 2024, it's either going to be free agency if they can afford it, uh, or in a couple of years, that's a lot of money leaving the book. So Collingwood will have the opportunity, um, aside from paying more money to some of these players, we know the Dacos brothers already signed up long-term, uh, but they're going to have cash to splash, and I think Collingwood will, will find a way to stay perennially competitive, and uh, I think that will involve trade and free agency moves as much as anything else. So that's my take on the pies. They're not in horrible shape considering the age of that list and, and how much quality is going to leave. Uh, it's okay. Uh, um, again, McRae and Allen as their best young midfield prospects. Yeah, they could probably, well, the, let's just say that they're unproven. So as an outsider looking in, uh, obviously I'm not convinced of how good they're going to be, uh, but time will tell. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this Collingwood team in three years, uh, anything you disagree with or agree with in this team, and perhaps nominate a player that you think I've probably underrated or potentially overrated in this particular analysis. But regardless, I appreciate you watching. Uh, give me some feedback in the comments what you think. And uh, for now, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.